Welcome, this is Dr. Jamie P. Motley with you again. Today we're going to do a thoracic spine tutorial covering the basic anatomical structures in the thoracic spine. Now the standard projections for the thoracic spine are AP thoracic as well as lateral thoracic which we'll show you next. When thinking about thoracic spine anatomy one must remember that the anatomical structures of the vertebrae are mostly similar. They will be a vertebral body, pedicles, lamina, spinous process, TP, so on and so forth. One structure that is different from the thoracic spine, uh, as with the cervical spine, is the lack of uncinate processes in this region. Additionally, we have ribs that sometimes we need to count, whether that's for testing purposes or for symptomatic purposes, maybe you're suspecting a rib fracture. Uh, so these, this rib counting can become very important, and we'll talk about this quite a bit. Now to begin, this is the AP projection of the thoracic spine, and I first want to start by identifying vertebral bodies. Now the vertebral bodies in the frontal plane, oh excuse me, let me just switch over to red, which I think is more uh, visible. All right, so here's a vertebral body. It's very square. Here's another vertebral body. Here's the intervening disc space, uh, which is going to be between these two intervertebral disc. Now let's get to some of the smaller anatomy pedicles, which are also known as the eyes of the spine, seen very well in the thoracic region. Now, in the thoracic region, the pedicles extend pretty much in a posterior word direction from the vertebral body, which is different from the thoracic spine, where the pedicles extended posterior lateral. And so on the AP projection of the thoracic spine, you can see the pedicles very, very well. Let's continue with spinous processes. Here's a spinous process, excuse me, which extends all the way up here. Apologies, it actually belongs to this vertebrae. Here's another spinous process belonging to this vertebrae. Here's another spinous process belonging to this segment. And here's the T12 spinous process. Now how did I know this is T12? Well, if you notice out in the periphery, just lateral to the vertebral bodies, you'll notice this last rib. Now typically the last rib is going to be the T12 rib or the 12th rib. However, similar to the cervical spine, you can have lumbar ribs, which is anomalous. Typically they'll be hypoplastic. Nonetheless, this can confuse your counting in the thoracic spine. So a more accurate way to count would be to start from the top. Identify T1 with their upward pointing transverse process processes and count from there or start with the first rib given that it's extending off the T1 segment. This is much more accurate for counting. However, we do see the posterior aspects of the ribs very well which are very horizontal in nature. If we had a film with a wider collimation we may catch some of the anterior more portions of the ribs which actually will come around and point downward uh, and are a little more difficult to count at the anterior aspect. Transverse processes are also well seen in the thoracic spine. Here's another one on this side. You can also see varying amounts of the diaphragm. In this case, let me just grab a different color. Here's the diaphragm. Here's a portion of it, or a hemidiaphragm. Here's the other portion of the hemidiaphragm. And here's the heart shadow. Now, as we all know, there's a lot more soft tissue that is normally visualized. However, this thoracic spine film was collimated pretty well. I'm just filling in the rest of the heart here, which you can see part of the density of. Typically, on a thoracic spine, you will have a slightly wider collimation, which will allow you to see varying amounts of the ribs, lung tissue, and maybe even to the lateral uh, chest wall margin. So, if you can see more of those structures, that's great. However, we're going to do a chest tutorial in which we'll identify the more peripheral structures around the spine for your viewing pleasure. We're now going to move on to the lateral projection of the thoracic spine. 
So here's our lateral projection. Now remember lateral projections are taken with the patient's arms out of the way. However, we cannot get the ribs out of the way. So one of the challenges we have on lateral thoracic radiographs is seeing the spine through the ribs. Let's start by identifying vertebral bodies again. All right. Now the upper portion of the thoracic spine is notoriously hard to see due to the superimposition of the shoulders with the spine. This is the first well visualized vertebral segment. So we'll outline this one. This is the vertebral body. Here's another vertebral body. And of course the intervening intervertebral disc space. Remember that each vertebral segment has a superior end plate as well as an inferior end plate in which the intervertebral discs attach to the body. Now here's the anterior margin of the vertebral body which can look sometimes concave specifically in this region as we begin to see degenerative changes. Just to finish outlining the body here. Now the next osseous structure to come out of the vertebral body is going to be the pedicle. Now if you follow with me again here's my ever so famous bird's eye rendition of vertebral bodies and I'll have them pointing in the direction appropriate here. This is anterior, this is posterior. Here's the vertebral body, pedicle comes next, followed by the articular pillar, followed by the lamina, followed by the spinous process. So we've identified the vertebral body and now we're looking for the structure that comes next directly posterior which is the pedicle region. Here's another pedicle. Now what do you know about the space that lives under one pedicle but above the other? This is the space in which I'm talking about. This is a circular region that's created by the pedicle at its roof, pedicle at its floor, body and disc in the front, and facet joints in the back. This is actually the IVF region, intervertebral foramen. Moving back to red, the next structure that's going to be behind the pedicle, let's just come down here, we can see a little better, here's the pedicle. Next anatomically posterior to the pedicle is going to be the articular pillar draw your attention here. Here's the superior articular process and the inferior articular process we don't see very well. However, this is the articular pillar and anything posterior to that we don't see very well. We cannot appreciate lamina or spinous processes very well, but if we look ooh, ever so closely we can see a spinous process right here. And can we see any other ones? Maybe right here. So what you'll understand is that anything posterior to the articular pillar is not well seen on radiographs due to these nice structures which like to wrap around and come anterior. These are the ribs. Now you'll notice there's several ribs here and one of the, dyna the dilemmas, excuse me, is that we're seeing both right and left ribs superimposed over each other and it can become quite a mess looking at the lateral projection. Now there some, are some other uh, soft tissue structures that are very well visualized and let me just back up quite a bit here so that you can have a clear visualization of these structures. All right now coming back to this mediastinal region this is the heart yes this is the hyalur region where our pulmonary arteries, pulmonary veins, excuse me, and main stem bronchi enter and exit the hilum. Here is the diaphragm. Here's a portion of the gastric air bubble, which is also known as the Magenblas. Gastric air bubble. This is actually air in the fundus of the stomach. This region will be visualized as an air density just inferior to the diaphragm. And those are the majority of the structures that we can see on lateral thoracic views. Again, I hope this tutorial was useful in helping you identify some of the anatomical structures on standard radiographic projections of the thoracic spine. Thank you so much for joining us and please come back for future tutorials.